welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to have a look at a new application. This is a new download a manager that is available on FlatHub and other places as well. And so this is a very brand new application, mostly still untested. So definitely test it out, report those bugs back to the creator of this. And um, we're going to go ahead and walk through this application called Varia. So this showed up this week on the various uh, Linux news sites. So OMG Ubuntu, 95 Linux, et cetera, et cetera. It is called Varia, available in FlatHub. And uh, this is an application, a very brand new initial release, just came out just literally a week or so ago. It uses GTK4 in Area 2 on Libadweta in order to provide an easy to use interface, integrates well with the GNOME desktop. Obviously the downside of anything with GTK in the GNOME desktop is too simplistic. So that leads to where many of the negative sides are. There are virtually no settings and no options. I cannot even say, hey, can you download stuff to the desktop instead or whatever else? All I have to do is come in here, paste in the URL, hit download, and then it's gonna show up in my list here. Now, one of the weird oddities is I had eight gigabytes of download space available, and now my drive is almost entirely filled up, despite nothing is completely done. It makes me wonder if this filled up the drive with a bunch of stuff in anticipation of finishing the software package, because starting at 8.3 gigabytes available, and you can see I have two fairly large distributions here, those being Linux Mint, which is, I think, around, uh, okay, so that's 2.8 gig. I have Farron OS. Uh, let's see if he tells me what the size of the download is. I think it's like 3 gig, maybe. Um, let's see if this has anything on it. Nah, it doesn't look like it. Let me back up, back up, back up. Nope. So they're not telling me how big it is. I think it's probably around, uh, probably around three or four gigabytes on that. The Debian, this is the net installer. So it's fairly small, maybe about a gigabyte. I have the Fedora server, fairly small, um, probably around a gigabyte. And then I just grabbed the down, the WordPress and the Joomla downloads just to have six things in here. Now the article suggests it can only manage five simultaneously. That's why I want to put six things in here. So it makes me wonder if what it's doing is it's filling up the, the download is like, it's basically reporting to the disk space that this stuff is used so that it doesn't fail in a download. That would be a neat thing uh, if it happened. So the way it works is it begins your download and then here is the initial download file uh, from Herrera. Here is the actual file it is writing to. So you see that the Fedora server says it's written at uh, 920 megabytes, despite the fact that the thing has zero there. That's what makes me think it's actually going in and reporting the full download size so the disk doesn't fill up. And then what it does is it uses this JSON file here, uh, which is telling you where it is and what the download location is. So this is how it's going back to make sure it grabs the amount. Here is the WordPress, 26 megabytes. Here is the Joomla package, 28 megabytes. Here's your Debian net install at 658. Despite again, you'll notice the net install is only 1% download. Farron is at 2.8 and Linux Mint 3.0. Uh, so maybe Farron is a little bit smaller than I had predicted. So it looks like it is reporting the file size as completely downloaded, mostly so it doesn't fail itself. So the idea then is what you do is you can just put everything in here. You can pause them at any time. And then if there's a network outage, it just immediately saves to that JSON file where it is. So as soon as you reboot the system, it's going to automatically restart. So let's go ahead and see if we can manage six at the same time. So we'll turn on the four that are big first. So it looks like I can do the three. The Debian did not turn itself on. And then these, oh, okay, so it is actually apparently downloading all five of them or all six of them simultaneously. So maybe those arbitrary download amounts were, again, just arbitrary. We'll go ahead and wait for it to finish the WordPress download there, which it's uh, moving up on pretty quick. And then uh, maybe it's actually is only doing five at a time because you'll notice that the Joomla is actually not downloading right now. So let's see what happens when this one kicks off if we see some bitrate coming on the Joomla install here. So 
That is almost done. So it appears as though the WordPress one is done. So let's go ahead and see if that uh, looks like it's correct. So that looks like it's correct. And now you'll see that uh, Joomla is now downloading. So indeed, it does uh, do five at a time, although you can put more in here and then it's just going to, I guess, maybe decide. I, or did I hit the Joomla one last? I don't know. It'll take the first five and then it'll um, uh, it'll report those in. So there you have it. So now the uh, looks like the JSON is one, two, three, four, five. So it looks like the JSON file disappears once the file's done. So you can see that's how it works. Now, here is um, here is one of the downsides that I found to this manager. It almost appears as though, um, now, if we just go ahead and close it, it's going to obviously stop downloading stuff. And then when we go to restart it, sometimes I was finding it didn't restart. Now, here it's going to restart, and then it's going to take a second, and then it should reread the JSON file. So maybe it doesn't. Maybe you just close the thing. It just shot itself in the foot. I don't know. Let's see what happens here. So obviously this is still good. The Joomla package does not work because it's not correct. And you'll see that just closing the application seemed to, uh, it seemed to mess it up. Let's go ahead and pause everything and restart and see what happens on restart. This is actually a bug I did not find in my initial testing because I thought I had just closed it to reopen it before. And what ended up happening, so there you go, it's doing something. So you can see it looks like it's doing something. It looks like it might still be downloading, but we're not reporting anything over here. So one of the challenges that I was encountering on a system restart is it appeared as though it was possibly working in the background. And as it was working in the background, I was not able to get this guy to boot. And after test testing to run it in the terminal, it was telling me that the uh, port that it needed to work with was... Um, was already taken, leading me to believe that it might be running behind the scenes without actually reporting that it's running. But you'll notice how things keep on jumping around. That means data is being written to these drives. I'm just not seeing that being reflected in the GUI. So maybe we have discovered a bug. All right, let's be like, oh, we need to do an immediate system. Uh, well, let's not do that. Let's go ahead and reboot the whole system here. We're going to I read the system and we're going to see if I can get that bug where Varia doesn't actually boot itself. Okay, so the connection is established. It tells us that uh, we are low on disk space, but note that our disk space hasn't moved since the last warning. And let me go ahead and just boot up that downloads folder before anything else happens. Let's see if there's any movement in here. So it appears as though there's no specific movement yet. We'll see. Now, this is the point in time where I was attempting to boot this up and it wasn't booting up for me. So we'll see. Okay, it is actually booting up right now. So now, now we're actually getting our information back. So now it's actually reporting properly. I don't know if it restarted itself on that initial download or if something else happens. But you'll see on a reboot, it actually worked. I don't know why it was, but sometimes what was happening is the system wasn't restarting itself properly. So it's actually good to see that it was. So what I did is I went to run it in a terminal, which if you forget how to run a flat pack in a terminal, you can always grab the run code from FlatHub, boot up your terminal, and paste that guy in there. And you'll see that, um, there you go, it actually restarted itself again, but you'll notice that it's not able to access. We're getting these errors here. What I was seeing earlier in my testing is I was getting these errors, but I was actually not getting the sec second instance of it booting up. So I'm not sure what was going on with that, but that appears to have resolved itself. So overall, we have a very good thing. I've just put it through some pretty rough stuff here and it actually is working better for me now that I'm recording the video than when I did my initial testing to figure out how everything was going to work before I recorded the video. So that's good to know. Um, so it is available as a flat hub. You can also build it. 
go on over to the GitHub page. And uh, this is at Giant Pink Robots. So I guess the Iron Giant is still a thing, only he's a girl now. Um, and so you can grab it on Flathub or you can come down here and there's some build instructions for what you need. Released under the Mozilla um, Public License 2.0. So that's available. And then all then you need to do is just come on over grab your download links, and then just paste them into the URL. So on the downsides, is it doesn't seem that there's any direct integration we can do with the browser to say, hey, use this instead of something else. That might be up on the browser. Um, and it does only manage five downloads simultaneously, although you can put more in there to queue it up. You can't specify where the downloads are going, so that is a, a downside. But for the most part, you do have a very good, easy, simple thing that hopefully will actually work without having to mess around with a bunch of other stuff. Uh, and who knows, maybe this is the way I can finally download stuff from SourceForge now because I have had a problem with that. Let's see if that Joomla package is correct now. So there you go, that Joomla package is now correct. So that's good. And from here now, it's uh, let's go ahead and kick that one off. Now it's still working on the Debian, the Fedora, um, the Farron, and the Linux Mint. So that's uh, that's what we have going on for it. So overall, it is a tool that is apparently working pretty well, being as new as it is in the system. And um, you know, use it and uh, let the creator know how it works. That way we can get a chance to see is this something that's going to be really good for us or, or not really good for us. So uh, hopefully that is a helpful little thing. I'll go ahead and look. Uh, I'll go ahead and post. Um, I'll post the GitHub down here because on the GitHub, I think you can get directly to the Flathub as well. So I'll put that in the description down below. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts about this or also tell me your favorite download manager that you use in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy... Switching to Linux.